Uh, welcome to this presentation about uh, what's new in Odoo Inventory uh, 13. Uh, my name is Michael and I'm going to walk you through uh, the te 10 most iconic features uh, that we have uh, developed uh, for this new version 13. Uh, because, of course, my objective is for you to become a superhero when leaving uh, this room and making sure that you will uh, know at the end of this presentation what are the features that you should implement in your company. So first, uh, I will start by presenting quickly uh, the refactored uh, master production schedule. So you know that it already existed before uh, since version 10. I actually presented the first version here about three years ago. And as you can see in this uh, refactored version, we actually have the opportunity to filter the master production schedule per warehouse, which is actually uh, quite nice because you don't have to do it at a high level uh, across the entire company and across the different warehouses that you have. And also, you have the possibility to uh, check uh, and compare your demand forecast with actually the actual demand, what was uh, realized uh, in the end with the sales. And you can also check the actual replenishments uh, that you made uh, through the master production schedule. So it's better connected to the different applications. You can see the request for quotations, for instance, uh, or the receipts uh, that have been triggered uh, by the master production schedule. Um, I can invite you to leave the room and run to the other room to see uh, William's presentation, or you can just uh, watch the recording uh, after uh, my presentation to get more information about the master production schedule. We also introduced in uh, version uh, 13 a subcontracting uh, route, which will actually help you to uh, directly buy subcontract products uh, to your suppliers. And it makes it much more easier to store uh, the different uh, components that you want to send uh, to your subcontractor's location. And everything is automated out of the box. You can also uh, decide to apply some reordering rules and resupply strategies to bring the components to your subcontractor's uh, location. And you can also uh, establish an on-demand, an on-order strategy so that every time you ask for a subcontract product, you will automatically send the components uh, to your subcontractor. We also handle uh, the fact that you have to pay some fees for the subcontracting and uh, actually uh, this is way easier than before. Uh, if you want more information, again, I invite you to go and see the presentation by, by Orian, which is at the end of the day at 5.30 p.m. Uh, today. So if you want to get more information and see how the configuration works, uh, go to this presentation. The, the, next topics that I the next topic that I want to present to you is the forecasted stock. Uh, we have a new view, actually, to handle uh, the forecasted stock. So if I switch uh, to my database and I, for instance, check one of the products that I have, my forecasted product, I can click here on the smart button and I directly see over a certain timeline the actual forecasted quantity uh, that I have and I can see the changes because of actual receipts that I have or, for instance, because of actual sales that I'm going to make. If I actually show here uh, the forecasted receipts, you can see that uh, the increase in forecasted quantity on the 4th of October is actually due to a planned receipt, and the uh, decrease here is actually due to a, a forecasted delivery uh, planned in the future. So you can actually investigate over time uh, the changes uh, in the forecasted quantity. And you can also switch to the grid view so that you can see which moves actually uh, impact your forecasted quantity. So that's really a, a cool feature that you can actually use also on the sales order. So if I create a quotation for a customer, you can see here that if I select the forecasted uh, product, I can directly see on my sales order, I have a small wizard that shows me the forecasted quantity for this product and the available uh, quantity as well. So that's really uh, very useful for uh, the salesperson. The other feature that I want to present is the new uh, um, 
I would say, features that the R&D team brought to the inventory adjustment. So actually now you can directly go in your inventory app in the inventory report and you can, for instance, search for a given product. And you can actually edit in line the inventory value and you can save. And this way I've just adjusted actually my uh, inventory for this product by just uh, changing the on-end quantity from the inventory report. So actually it's very useful if you want to make some uh, mass edit. Behind that actually you uh, still have an inventory adjustment that is made, meaning a stock move uh, from your internal location to a virtual one for the uh, inventory loss in this situation. So that's uh, about the, the inventory adjustment uh, for uh, V13. As you can see also, we have uh, made some improvements to actually quickly create uh, serial numbers when you receive your items uh, at the point of entry in your warehouse. So we have two uh, new functionalities, which is actually a copy-paste uh, from a spreadsheet. So actually, if your supplier sends some uh, serial numbers, you can directly copy-paste them from this spreadsheet. And you have also a quick creation function that will actually help you uh, to create uh, a, a sequenced uh, serial number. So I can show you uh, this. So I will go on a purchase order. So I have a, a pending purchase order with a pending uh, receipt. If I actually open the wizard to register the serial numbers, I can either decide to pre-create the first number of my sequence, and I'm going to say the number of serial numbers that I want uh, to assign. And then I just click Assign Serial Numbers, and it automatically creates the five serial numbers that I needed. An alternative to that would be to have a spreadsheet where I have numbers that were uh, given by one of my suppliers. I copy uh, the information, I just paste it here, and you can see it automatically creates all the serial numbers. So actually here, it's very easy, it's very simple for you to create the serial numbers at the point of entry by using these two uh, different tools. So this is the serial numbers uh, mass assignation uh, feature. We have also another interesting addition to the version 13 is the fact that you can now uh, perform with the routes that you have configured a partial MTO and MTOs, uh, meaning that you can actually have the system look first whether you have the quantities in stock, uh, and if the quantities are not available, we will actually directly uh, reorder to the, to the supplier. So let's uh, see an example of that. So I, I decided that my um, outbound strategy, uh, I will actually apply this MTO MTS supply method. And if I look here at my partial MTO product, I see that I have 10 units on end. So actually, if I create a sales order for this end customer, for my partial MTO MTS for 10 units, and if I confirm it, you see that if I check my delivery, uh, it will actually here uh, create a purchase order because I haven't got enough units. Uh, I guess that my units were reserved, so that's why it created directly a purchase order. So it decided here that the best solution uh, to actually supply this product to the customer was to buy the product instead of actually uh, picking it up in stock. So if I check my purchase orders, for the partial MTO MTS, I have actually here 10 units that are ordered. So that's for uh, the partial MTO MTS. So another interesting feature is the fact that now, as we, the same uh, feature that we brought in V12, which was the warehouse analysis with different KPIs, you can now actually report on your purchase orders by actually going directly to this menu, which is the purchase analysis 
uh, report that will give you the most important KPIs, for instance, the delays that you have on the incoming uh, shipments, uh, the total value of orders that you have, the average cost um, that uh, you have per product or per supplier. So you are actually able to report on all this uh, using uh, the purchase analysis uh, from V13. Another important f feature that is actually hidden uh, in the background is the valuation layers. Uh, you know it was quite difficult, uh, starting from V11 with the new inventory valuation, to track actually all the changes that happened in the inventory valuation, especially if you were working in uh, FIFO or average costing, it was hard to track uh, why you, you got to such uh, a value for a certain product. No, actually, the idea is that we are going to log every decrease or increase uh, of value within the system, and that will be used actually to compute uh, your end uh, inventory valuation. So that's the reason why here uh, it's very interesting because it means that for every receipt, outgoing shipment that you make, uh, we will record a valuation layer, which will help us actually to understand how we got to the, to the inventory valuation value that you see in your inventory valuation report. So here you can see on the, on the right uh, corner of your, of your picking, you will see a valuation smart button that will give you the information of uh, the valuation layer that is associated to it. We also have uh, the opportunity now uh, to uh, send automated emails and SMS when you validate the delivery order, uh, which means that you can directly warn your customer that uh, the product uh, left uh, the, the inventory. So here, as you can see, uh, this is an automated email template that is being sent uh, to your customer. And then finally, there is uh, one more thing that I think that is quite interesting. Uh, the landed cost uh, functionality remains the same, but there is an extra uh, possibility here to actually automatically create the landed cost uh, from the invoice itself. Uh, you know that in the past you had to actually record first the vendor bill for the services, for the additional services that you wanted to include as an extra cost, and then only create separately a landed cost. Now you have the possibility uh, directly from the vendor bill if the vendor bill contains landed cost product to actually create a landed cost uh, from this vendor bill. So actu actually I'm going to show you uh, this at the same time showing also the, all the valuation layers uh, work. So I'm going to first quickly configure a product in, uh, with the FIFO costing method and in with the automated uh, with the automated uh, strategy. So, yeah. so here is uh, the FIFO automated. Um, I don't need to associate any cost. I will actually uh, record my vendor and I say that I buy it at a price of 10. Okay. So now I'm going to create, no, to create a purchase order to my supplier for the FIFO automated. Yeah. Let's say eight units at 10 euro. If I check my receipt, I can validate the receipt of the product. And as you can see here, I can quickly click on the smart button to see the valuation layer. And I see actually uh, the valuation layer that explains how many units at which unit value for which total value and what remains to be used when I will deliver in the future uh, new items. And actually I could uh, create a second uh, purchase order for a different price. I will save it and confirm. I will validate my receipt. And here, again, I have another valuation layer uh, that is recorded to actually store the new uh, cost for this new receipt. And if I double check in my inventory, in the inventory valuation uh, report, uh, yeah, actually I will look like this. If I look for my FIFO 
uh, product. Uh, I check my FIFO automated. I can trace back actually the different costs that were associated to this product. Now I'm interested to actually increase the cost uh, of one of these products, of one of these receipts, because I had uh, extra additional costs, landed costs associated to it. So in order to do that, I will actually uh, first uh, double check again, uh, which was the reference of my, of my um, receipt. So I will double check the first receipt that I had. So I have my reference here. I will switch to the accounting app where I'm going to actually create a vendor bill. So I'm going to say I had some customs uh, fee for, for this product. <laughs> if, yeah, you, doesn't matter. So I will create it. And then I will take a custom product that I created, which is actually referred as a landed cost uh, product. I can associate a price, a charge that I paid to my, to my supplier, and I'm actually going to post the vendor bill. So actually the accounting team uh, has made his, his or her job. And from there, I can actually create a landed cost. So it will automatically uh, grab the information from the vendor bill and translate it into an extra cost that I should apply on one of the operations that I made uh, in the world. So if I, for instance, look for my uh, receipt number 74 that I just validated before, I will uh, apply it here and I will also define on which account I want to um, increase the cost of the product and I just validate the landed cost and an extra valuation layer has been added on this product. So it means again that if I go back in the inventory app and I check my inventory valuation and then <laughs> I will be done. Um, if I check my inventory valuation, yep. Now I have three cost layers. The two first one with the quantity associated to it because it was linked to receipts. And the last one is actually a landed cost, which is an extra cost that I applied onto the product. And I can see my end valuation. So that's really the new functionality about the landed cost. And as you can see, we've I think brought uh, quite a lot of new features on an already quite stable uh, and mature, mature product. And so uh, if you have any questions after the presentation, of course, you should not hesitate uh, to come see me. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation.